This program is dedicated to the men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. Meet Keith Warren. As a 30-year veteran of the outdoor industry and devoted conservationist, the original Texas angler and outdoor television icon has hunted around the world and across America. Showing you big game, educating outdoorsmen, and uniting all hunters. <laughs> That's Keith Warren, and this is The High Road. Well, lucky for me, Keith Warren is back in September. We're archery hunting for mule deer and uh, pretty excited. The weather's a little hot, but just a couple years ago, Keith brought his wife up here. It was a great time. It's real special to have him be able to bring us some family members. And now this, this particular time, he's, he's brought his dad. And it was really nice to, to meet Keith's dad and he's having a great time. But uh, there's always a little bit of drama uh, with hunting. and. Sometimes a little bit of drama when Keith is here. Keith is a great shot, great archery shot, great rifle shot, but he's having little problems this time shooting his bow. Now this particular time, it, it's bad. I mean, it's, it's not a little problem, it's a big problem. I mean, I've seen Keith shoot that bow right on at 100 yards, and, and this time I'm not sure if he could, could hit our barn from 30 yards, so it, it, we've got a little problem. This week we're in Montana. We're going to be going on a deer hunt. Uh, just landed in Great Falls. This is my father, Bob. The main object of today's show is a father-son hunt, and we're just going to go on a, on a fun trip. Hopefully we'll do some good. But uh, first off, we're in Vaughn right now at 3D Archery Supply. It's owned by Tony Heinert. Tony is a big bow tech dealer, and he's going to help me out <laughs> with a big problem I have. Tony. Keith, how are you? Long time no see. It has been a while. Good yeah. to see you again. Good to Good see, see you. you. That's my dad, Bob. How are you, Bob? My pleasure. My pleasure. I got problems. That's what I hear. And uh, I need some help in a bad way. I mean, this is this is something that I'm embarrassed to say. And I mean, I've never had this issue before. I've heard about it. I've read about it. And it's target panic. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just, I got to have some help. So yep, it's a... Uh, what can you do to help me? Yeah, we can do something. We can go out in the range, and I've, I've got some things we can try, and I think we can get, get you started on the right track for sure. Okay, well, I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Target panic is uh, a fear of missing, I guess. When you, uh, you draw back and you put that pin on the target, sometimes you can't get the pin up to the spot. And when you get it to go by the spot, sometimes you jerk that trigger as it goes by the spot, which doesn't help a bit. It's kind of hard to get rid of. Whoa, you got a 40 yard range. Yep, we've got a nice range here. What we're gonna do is go, I wanna go clear to the back so that you've got all those targets you know you're not gonna miss. And we're gonna start, we're gonna start doing this blind bale shooting. I'll show you. Okay. Yeah, this is nice. You'll see, the idea is we don't want you to even consider where you're aiming. You don't care where you're aiming. All you care about is how you release that trigger. The bow should surprise you when it goes off. And that arrow will find its way to the target. Close your eyes. Nice, easy pull. The, when, when the bow goes forward, you're kind of pulling it back, and you want to just kind of let it go. When it goes, just kind of, just kind of let it fall off there just a bit. Try that. Okay. It'll all come together. I usually just use my index finger and my thumb because you may tend to try to grab it at the last instant. I don't want that. How was that? How's that feeling to you? That felt really good. Yeah. And if you do that for a while, 
go back to shooting, you'll find out that, well, wow, this thing is going right to the target now. And you may, it may try to come back on you and mm -hmm. then just come back and do a little more of this. Do you mind if I stay here a little while? You stay right here and practice a while and I'll go take care of some business and just have fun and then we'll try. I'd like to see you try some shots after you do this. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And that guy back there, my dad, uh -huh. I brought him up here to Montana and had a good time. So start showing him a good time. I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do it. Okay. All right, Keith. The High Road with Keith Warren is brought to you in part by Gamma Precision Air Rifles. Glock, oil field camel, and Heartcraft hunting products. Off Power Polaris presents viewer feedback. This one comes to me from uh, a fellow says, Mr. Warren, I'm trying pellets this year to feed our deer, and I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about protein pellets. I found when it molds after a couple of days of getting wet, uh, the deer won't eat it. He's uh, wondering if I have the same problem. Uh, he says, I appreciate everything you do for the deer hunting world. The answer is absolutely, I've got that same problem and uh, so does anybody else who uh, feeds deer pellets. When they get wet, almost all of them are gonna get moldy uh, given enough time. So if they get moldy, the deer will not eat them. Uh, that's the reason why uh, when you're choosing feeders to, to feed your supplemental feed, choose a feeder that'll keep your feed just about as dry as you can keep it, and make sure you're feeding the best feed that you can afford to buy. Well, Keith was vexed with his ability or inability shoot tight groups at the archery range. Tony, who runs the shop down there, said, it's all in your mind, and you're jerking the release. And what you need to do is perfect the release, independent of where the arrow goes, such as shoot at a hay bale, a giant hay bale, and then you concentrate on the pull of the release make it repeatable and you get confident that you can do that and then when you put the target up a small target to hit you're much more likely to beat this vexation of not being able to release consistently and shoot tight groups oh, I'm so messed up dad I mean I'm telling you I'm I am messed up this is horrible oh, oh here's something y'all can help me with <laughs> I need a lot of help with a lot of things but Look at this old bow case I got. It's uh, pretty stout. The only thing is, it's pretty worn out and I'm looking for a new bow case. So if y'all would get on my Facebook page and please give me your suggestions as far as what kind of bow case to use, I would really appreciate it. Now some more help. <laughs> it's time for therapy. Okay, well I can see that everything looks copacetic. You're doing a good release, but the one thing I can't see is whether your eyes are closed, like Tony told you, to close your eyes and don't look at the arrow. Well, it looks the same from shot to shot. Release looks good. I've never done this before, but it makes all the sense in the world. It's just. I've gotten into an extremely bad habit. I can't see what you're doing wrong. It must be inside your thick head. I'm doing the same thing every time. I, I know that I am. I'm panicking every single time. Okay. <laughs> it feels good. I don't know what else to do. I'm, gonna, I'm getting tired now. I'm going to go relax and uh, put a target up and see what happens. Okay, Keith, let me get this straight. Now, this is a self-diagnosed condition, and you're calling it target panic. Is that right? Yeah, but remember that shot, that elk that I shot in Utah? I got a clean pass through, 35 yards, perfect. Sure, I remember that. Ever since, I mean, nobody ever taught me. Ever since a little boy, I just pick up the bow and shoot it, and then I never really even thought about it. Now, all of a sudden, I developed this issue and it's like I come to full draw and I 
that the pin crosses the target. And the pin comes across the target, across the target, and that's a jerk. The trigger and the arrows fly here and yonder, and I wanted to, Dad. Dad? Well, thanks for the therapy, Dad. Well, I hope it works for you. Boy, I do too. I didn't even know you left. I mean, I was sitting in well, there. Well, I thought we had outlived our usefulness there. The fish biting? No. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> the High Road with Keith Warren is brought to you in part by Reconnix Game Cameras, Savage Arms, Grizzly Cartridge Company, and Jardin Consumer Solutions, makers of the Game Saver. I'm very fortunate to outfit and live in the Bear Paw Mountains. It's a very special area. and. Uh, one of the things that makes it special, obviously, is it's this great habitat for wildlife, and we don't have any predators like wolves and things like that, and our winters are pretty mild. Uh, we don't get a lot of winter kill, and so far uh, we've been fortunate enough not to have any kind of diseases like blue tongue or EHD that uh, can wipe out our herd. We've been rifle hunting out here for over 20 years with our outfit and business and just the last few years we've really started pushing the archery hunting and Keith has, has really helped out a lot to, to, to get our archery hunting kicked off. We have great numbers of deer and great quality out here. We've got hay fields all over and it really works well with archery hunting to uh, be able to hunt those animals, whitetail, antelope, mule deer, elk, off those hay fields. But this September it's been really, really tough hunting with all of the heat we have. And what the deer are doing is, is a lot of them are coming down to the hay fields, but they're coming down about an hour after it gets dark or half an hour after it gets dark. So it's been a little bit of tough hunting for that reason. They're coming out of the problem is they're coming after legal shooting light. And some of these uh, shots that we uh, have on these animals are, are not very close. And with the way Keith is shooting, I don't know if we can seal the deal. Well, most people would look at my costume and think I was a hunter, and they'd be right. I'm a lifelong hunter. But now, at my age, I'm fortunate enough to be able to hunt with a camera, courtesy of a son who is in the outdoor television business. And our roles have changed. When he was a little boy, I took him hunting, and now, that he's a grown man and I'm an old man. He takes me hunting and I get to take the camera and don't have to drag any animals. And going hunting with Keith is a thrill because he has become an avid archer over the years and that's the toughest kind of hunting and I get to go with him and I've watched him shoot unbelievable shots with the bow and arrow that I would never have believed could be done. Let's go ahead where the range finder is on the fence. That's where we're going to put it. Let me tell you all uh, what's going on. We wound up last night. Uh, we sat in this field, and there were tons of deer that came in. Uh, sat up in a little blind over there, and we had two really big mule deer bucks. Either one of them's a great shooter. Uh, they were just too far away, about 70 yards away, and it was a little bit too dark for good camera light. We're gonna put my dad where we were last night and we're gonna erect the blind where we think we're gonna be right in the perfect spot for these mule deer. They're coming out of a mountain range out there and they're coming in here. This is the only alfalfa and as you can see, it's beautiful, irrigated, green. It's the only food source for miles and miles. So uh, we can be here loud and making all kinds of racket, but about six o'clock we need to be quiet and get settled in. Lots of room, got it cleared off in here. Now all I gotta do is 
Go take a shower, get all cleaned up and get our equipment and get back out. Got a couple hours before dark. This is gonna be the right spot, I promise. The High Road with Keith Warren is brought to you in part by Striker Crossbows, Half Power Polaris, Burt Coyotes, Luminoc, and Luminaris, the new supercharged scent killer by Wildlife Research Center, beyond 99%, and BSA Optics. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at here, folks! It is unbelievable. This is this this is good therapy now. Uh, this is really really good therapy. And if you haven't taken your father on a fishing or hunting trip in a while, do both you and your dad a favor. Take them because the way that uh, you spell love is T I M E. Look at that. Look at that, Dad. What do you think about that fish? <laughs> Thank you. I got an old saying that the outdoors, being outdoors, no matter how old you are, it's like the fountain of youth, and it really is. You know, on today's show, I wound up, I, fortunately, I had my dad with me, and I love hunting with him today as much as I did when I was a little boy. And like he said, the roles have kind of reversed. I mean, I'm, I'm now taking care of him, and that's kind of the way it's supposed to be. Hopefully someday, good Lord willing, my son's gonna be able to take me on hunting trips too. And, and so, you know, it, I can't think of a better way to, uh, to spend time and then also a better person to have helped me get through this problem of target panic. I don't know if you've ever had target panic, but, I don't, but if you have, I'd love to hear from you how you deal with it, because I don't think it's something you just kick. I think it's a bad habit that you get into. It's something I have to work on every single time I shoot my bow to make sure I'm doing the right thing. It's like jerking the trigger on a rifle. It's just, it's real easy to do, real easy to slip into bad habits, but I think I'm kind of on the way to recovery. I could have taken my dad hunting uh, well, just about any place I wanted to. I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that, but I chose to take him to the Bear Paw Mountains up in Montana and hunt with Chris Faber because Chris is the best. I mean, he's absolutely the best. The Faber Ranch is a beautiful place. The Bear Paw Mountains are a special place. I mean, it's an area that uh, the mountain range is not that big. It's uh, privately owned, and Chris has a lot of that private land leased up there which means he manages it kind of the way that we manage for whitetails. I mean, he is managing for giant mule deer. Uh, you know, it's a game rich environment. I mean, he's got uh, mule deer, there's uh, down in the Missouri breaks. I mean, he's got bighorn sheep and I, I love bighorn sheep. Uh, uh, elk hunting, uh, it, 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 it's hard to get a tag there. But if you get a tag, Chris Faber is the man you want to go with. But Chris, all around, Chris is just a good guy. He's a family guy. Uh, you're liable to see, well, one of the guides up there, we call him Guide B, Steve. That's uh, Chris's older brother. But uh, he works with him and, uh, geez, I mean, it's the Faber Ranch. It's been in the fa same family for generation after generation after generation. He's got some really big white tails too. So I could have taken my dad any place I wanted to go. But I've been to Bear Paw Mountain so many times I knew, but absolutely positively I could go up there and not even see an animal and still have a good time with my dad. Anyway, I'd like to encourage you to get on my Facebook fan page and let me know how you deal with the issue of target panic. I'm Keith Warren. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching. I'd like to encourage you to thank the members of our military for doing a job well done. I'd like to always, always encourage you.
Estate Hiring. What's amazing about a lion is, uh, you know, their their claws, their pad, their pad is real wide. They can walk across top of snow. Just amazing how they can walk across snow and not fall in. And then their their claws. I mean, they've got the claws that can bring down a deer, and then their big killer claw that they can hook on, pull an animal down, and uh, you know, it's over when they do that. And they're amazing. We are just getting these young dogs uh, accustomed to the chase. Where is it? Where is it? Anybody think this is easy? This isn't easy. Log on to KeithWarren.net for 24-7 access to more information, more video, and full episodes.